a little different. Anybody ask about their nest and sing it? It's for all the country people. <laughs> Like my straight leg Levi's, like my Justin boot. I like the smell of fresh in the hay in the early morning dew. Like my steps and hat, and I like my feather bed, and I like my pinto bean with a pen of fried cornbread. And I like my I like the sight of a steel guitar There's something about playing fiddle That puts a melody in my heart Jesus gave me a new song I no longer sing the blues I got a funny feeling The Lord likes to Again, I gotta go in there and print my. I need my flash drive. I gotta go in there and print my other one. I printed last week instead of this week. I just thought of that. I'm getting old like Daniel. You don't want the same sermon from last week, right? This is the 18th. I know, but I. This is last week. Oh, okay. I just was thinking, sitting there thinking about that. Yeah. 
Anybody got a request? <laughs> Jesus loves me. Yeah. Jesus loves me. Slides aren't marked on this one. The slideshow's right, but the slides aren't marked. You'll see. Do you have your flash drives? Okay. Say it one more time. I forgot my flash drive. I quit. Get my steps in. I'm getting my steps in. Yeah, right. So we talk about choices. Now go to that next slide. I told you that I had that slide last week. I forgot. Just read what it says. So you can see. Uh, I told Jim you could use the back of the pickup, but he wouldn't use it. Yeah. Now, like I said last week, can we all make dumb choices? You know, you go. To, you want to go to the our pantries right next to the refrigerator. The other day, I wanted something in the pantry to open the refrigerator. The Ziploc bags are not in the refrigerator. Now, some people keep things in weird places. But we don't keep the Ziploc bags in the refrigerator. We all do things that we later think, wow. That looks like Larry Shirk. <laughs> that does look more like Larry Shirk. Uh, but we got down to the part of us, we're talking about humility over pride. And the next part is our children. Now, we're not going to go into the birds and the bees. If you want to know about that, talk to Jim. I'm sure he can come up with a very Ill illustrative story. Because Jim comes up, his brain just goes like that. But children, now, they're ours, right? The, the, your children will always be yours. Several years ago, Sweden made a law that when you got to a certain age, you could, a, a child could divorce their, child, their, their parents and never be belong to them again. Well, I don't care what a piece of paper says, it's still your children. You made them, God breathed the breath of life into them. All that happened to them, you raised them, they're still yours. So our children, we sometimes think, well, my children are the result of biology and genetics. That is true. Um, but they wouldn't be so great if, if I wasn't so great. Yet, when you look at what God does... When you look at who he is, Psalm 127.3 says, Lo, children are an inheritance of the Lord, and they're the fruit. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Now, when we got married, Becky wanted to have her quiver full, which is 12, but actually a quiver full of arrows is actually 13. In Bible times, a quiver full was 13. She said, I'd like to have 12 children. And we had, yeah, really, that's what we said after Randy was born. Uh, we had Ryan, and Becky, if I brought her up right now and said, why, why didn't you have any more children? She'd say, Randy. Uh, that had all the total. We, we decided as a couple, we were in college, we were poor, uh, making four seventy five an hour. Becky stayed home. That's not a lot of, it was enough to survive on back then, paying for college and all that. Our rent was like $135 a month at the house, and the landlord came and said, I'm going to raise your rent to $165. You know, $30 when you don't have much is a lot of money. $30 is a lot of money when you don't have much 
and we had the corner windows was all these big windows. I had to put plastic over them in the winter. We had to keep the thermostat about 60 degrees because we couldn't afford the gas. Uh, we were poor. And we decided that two children was enough. That we didn't want to get overloaded. I heard about people that had four, five, six children. Now, my uncle had six kids, but he had a good job. Worked down in the, in the grocery industry in St. Louis, and he had a good job. But we decided for us, we prayed about it, decided that two was enough. We get the idea that we have these children, and our pride says they're all because of me. But the Bible says in Psalm 127 that they're a heritage from the Lord. They're the fruit of the womb. That means they come from God. They're the Lord's. Is there anything we own that doesn't, that doesn't belong to God? I'm serious. We have what we call blessings. Our food, our clothing, our, our hair, you know, whatever it is. Um, our bodies, they all come from the Lord. We get this pride thing and say, well, it's because of me. Look what I did. That's why I had the first slide, the big eye. So look at this next slide. We, we talk about independence. Although God desires our fellowship, do you know that God doesn't need it? In human term, terminology, God is completely self-sufficient. Now, God desires our love. He desires our, our adoration. He desires us to give our tithes. He desires us to sing. He desires us to fellowship. He desires us to love one another. Um, do you know who the most patient person is in the entire universe? God. I heard preachers say that God is so patient, all this evil, you know, he could wipe out, there is evil in this world beyond control. He can wipe out evil people. But God has so much patience that he does it. And I thought, you know what? Let's not just say God could wipe out the evil people. How many of you have ever sinned in your life? Raise your hand if you've ever sinned. He can wipe us out. Now we're not evil. I understand we're saved. We can't do that. He can't wipe us out. We're guaranteed life eternal. The blood covers us. We're made perfect. I understand all that. But if he wasn't patient... Go back to before you got saved. Go way back. Turn on that way back machine. Back to the future. Turn on that machine. We all could have been wiped out. The cartoons show God sitting on a throne. And he's got this lightning bolt, this big old lightning bolt, and when something does, does something, he throws it down and zaps them. That's not God, how God works, but he could. He could. But we think all that we have, we're independent, it's us. But he doesn't have to have us. We exist, you know, he existed before our creation. Um, he made us, he made us out of gratitude. He made us to serve him. Now, I know, we put all the blame on Adam and Eve. Eve took the fruit of the knowledge of the good and evil, and she shouldn't have done that. We say, women shouldn't have done that. But any one of us, as humans, if we had the opportunity, if we were told not to do something, we'd do it because that's our human nature. Ryan used to do that. He, we'd tell him not to do something. He would look at you and he would put, give him you that smile and he would do it anyway. The boys would stay with us and they're heading home and I assume by now they're going back to the hotel and the boys would stay with us and Kylie won't stay with anybody yet because he's four but she won't. But everywhere I went, and she's here, she wanted to be my pop. So she's looking at pictures on the wall this morning of Ryan and Randy when they're younger. I said, and even when they were teenagers. And she, I said, that's daddy. She said, why does he have that face? <laughs> now you talk about a four-year-old. She's not yet comprehended, kept saying, I'm your daddy's daddy. She hasn't, she hasn't picked up on that yet. Randy was aggravating her yesterday, and I said, Daddy, you know, I said, Uncle Randy's your daddy's brother. She doesn't comprehend him that yet, but she looked at him. Why does he have that face? Now we get up, we get older, and we're, she's used to seeing him, you know, back then, Ryan had a bunch of hair. His hair's back here now, so it's a little bit different than it was. So she's used to seeing her daddy with a beard and, and, and a half bald. Why does he have that face? But God made us in his image. Um, we're his. 
if you know loving God cared enough about to create us like that he loved us enough to get our attention but what I'm saying is he doesn't have to have it now he wants it he desires it he's made us so we can give him attention and love and, I, and, and all that um I printed the long version of these. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'll just print it real quick. But God's plan is to shower us with good gifts. I just talked about the blessings. That we might have the desire to love the giver of the gifts. Now, not only to do that, that's not just the purpose, but blessings. Now, talk about us being poor or younger. Some of you have been there. You have been where... You didn't have. Now, some people are born with a golden platter. Everything's handed to them. There are kids who didn't have to buy their own cars. There are kids who don't have to get their own jobs. Their mom and daddy take care of everything. There are people who have everything handed to them. Most of us have had to work for what we have. We appreciate it. The boys wanted something to do the other day on Friday, and they were bored. They'd already riding red bikes, and they'd already swung in the swings, and they'd already done all that house. And Aiden said, let's rake the leaves in the front yard. I don't have a problem with that. We got a big maple tree there in front. Leaves fall off of those trees. They're falling right now. Uh, most of our redbud trees have fallen. Got those out of the driveway. Those are out of the way. The ones in the back are starting to, the, the, the mulberry trees starting to fall. They're starting to turn yellow. They're starting to fall. But that maple tree drops a lot of leaves. I said, okay, guys, I'll pay you. So I paid them each seven bucks to help me with the tree. Now, half of my leaves are gone. They even helped me haul them back to the back. To them, it was a game. When you get 63 years old, it's not a, it's not a game doing all those leaves. I used to have a big pile of leaves. I mean, we were enough there at one point. I turned around, and I was blowing the neighbor lady because I always blow Shirley's driveway off, clean that off for her. She's a widow, and I try to help her, too. I just do it every time I do mine. I blow hers off, clean, keep it clean for her. And her son's come and rake them up out of the yard. But I turn around and Aiden's gone. And Gage, and Connor Nolan didn't even know where he's at. He's in the pile of leaves, buried. <laughs> of course, they all got in the whole pile. And had showers, you know, all that good stuff. But I said, you guys, you want to help me or something? Do that's fine. Well, I paid them. They're, they enjoy it. Now, how many of you, when you were growing up, got paid for doing chores? Anybody? There's no hands going up. I did. You got paid? I did. Spoiled brat. <laughs> no wonder she's the way she is, Mike. <laughs> no, maybe some many people did. We didn't get paid for chores. We were allowed to help. We were allowed to live in the house. We were allowed to eat the food. We were allowed to do all that. I I, I hated mowing the grass. That push mower, you go back and forth, back and forth. Didn't have no motor on it. I hated doing that. Which would make me do I hated doing that. I mean, I just despised it. I would argue with it like a normal teenager. I didn't want to do it. I hated doing that. We didn't get paid. Uh, but I gave them each seven bucks for help. They didn't help that long. didn't take that long. We got all the four of us doing it. Their joy. They'll stop at a truck stop or somewhere in the home. On the way home, guess what? They'll spend, Connor will spend his all on candy. No one will get some candy. Aiden will find a toy. Ryan said that when they stop at places like that, gift shops, Kylie's the worst one. Cost him more money for Kylie's stuff that she wants than the boys. She's always wanting these dolls and all this other stuff. But God gives us gifts. That was a blessing to them. I let them help. They, they enjoyed it. But God said um, He loves us. He cares about us. He created us. But we think this independence that we have, the last thing I have on this part here is independence is the belief that we are that that we are sufficient apart from God, and the dead result of that is pride. We, I, well, I'm going to speak for myself. I need God. Anybody else? <laughs> this, not, and not, you know, we keep alluding to the pandemic, but what about before the pandemic? What about last year? What about the year before last? What about when things happened and? Problems happen and tragic things happen, and we just needed God, and we are, are you know, we sat there and cried, and we needed things done, and we needed help, we couldn't do it on our own. What about your whole Christian life? You maybe say 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, you need God. You've needed God the whole time. 
But in a world today, we need God. And I can't do without Him. I'm not perfect. Don't plan on being. They won't be until we get to heaven. I never will be. Therefore, I need God. This independence, so we're not independent. We need it. The next thing is intolerance. As you examine the Gospels, we see that Jesus did not heal, did not deal harshly with adulterers, like we just said a while ago, thieves, or even murderers. Sometimes he just said, your sins are forgiven. Jesus' harshest words were reserved for the self-righteous Pharisees. The Pharisees, see, they thought that they could just follow all the law. They had it in their head that they were they were so prideful that they could follow every law, and that was their problem. They strived to put all their focus on following the law instead of serving God. Now, if you go back, even uh, most of us, even as kids, we don't always like rules. In school, kids don't always like the rules. You're going to find people who are going to break the rules. You're going to find people who are stubborn. They're going to break the rules just for the sake of breaking the rules. Just because they can. What's the phrase we use? Rules are made to be broken. They're not. You're going to find people who want to break the laws. The speed limit says 55. They'll drive, they'll drive 65 or 75. Because they're in a hurry. Um, whatever you come up with, we always want to do things our own way because we're self-righteous. Because of intolerance, we think that our self-righteous is good. But the Pharisees' self-righteousness led to a hatred for their own people. And their false teaching, their false assumptions that they were the only ones going to heaven. Now, you all know people who are prideful like that, and they, they think they're the only one doing something right. And that nobody's as good as them. We had a group of guys at school got into this thing. Watchman Nee is a Christian writer. But he had some things he got, he, he talked about the deeper life. And he talked about getting in so deep with God, which is no problem. I understand that. I don't have a problem with that. But this guy, there was about six or eight of these guys, and they were always pushing, watching me, and pushing this and pushing this, trying to talk to other people, telling you need to watch this. But then they thought that because they were involved with this type of thinking, they were better than everybody else. That they were a little couple steps above everybody else. That they were a couple steps above everybody else, and they didn't see it that way. They were sort of like the Pharisees. Now, I, you're talking about Bible college. What kind of people are Bible colleges? Human beings. I wasn't perfect. I got written up for a couple things in the college. Goofing around, doing things we weren't supposed to. We've all been there. But these guys thought they were better than anybody else. I, it's been so long ago, I don't know if any of this group... I know one of them did. And he went to start a church in Washington State. I don't know if any of the rest of the group ever graduated. Now, that college is not for everybody. Everybody can't make it in college. I don't care what you do. Um, a lot of parents want you to go to college. They force you to go to college. And maybe it's not for everybody. My brother was one of them. He didn't finish high school. College was not for him. Rain took quite a few classes. He was doing criminal justice at Ivy Tech, and then he finally just got out of that. It just, just wasn't for him. It just wasn't for Rain. It's not for everybody. It's not cheap. It costs a lot of money. We're talking yesterday. And Troy and Ulysses over talking. We're sitting there talking. They're talking about the cost of colleges. They're talking about how some people just go to campus. Which I, I, this is a pretty day. Dave, Dave Ramsey talks about it all the time. I want to go to this college because the campus is beautiful. It's going to cost me $75,000, but the campus is pretty. Dave Ramsey said, that's foolish. It's crazy. Don't go into debt like that. But we get this pride thing in there. So we have this, this, this thing of intolerance. We think that we're better than anybody else. We have an inflated view of ourselves sometimes that we... 
are better than anybody else, and we don't have to follow the rules. Well, God doesn't leave anybody out. Pride is so subtle that we can become proud of our humility. Humility and how I attained it. You know, in God's eyes, before we're all saved, we're all nothing. If, if we were separated from God, we're nothing. When Adam and Eve took the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there was a wall there. This, they're on this side, God's on this side. They, they couldn't even get to him anymore. There was a wall. But the moment we accept him, the moment we say, I'm humble enough to say, I need to be saved, God changes everything. So we need to be careful. So the next thing is the inability to accept God's grace. Wow. Perhaps the most tragic result of pride is the inability, as we just said, to accept God's forgiveness. We have a whole world around us. If there's seven billion people, they say. If one-fifth is Christians, as they say, now that includes cults and everything, but they say one-fifth are Christians, that's approximately two billion, I know that's not an exact number, but a little less than that. But that means, let's say it's one and a half billion, that means out of seven billion, there's five and a half billion left. Now in that five and a half billion, there are a lot of people who are proud, proud and a lot of people who don't want to accept God, who say they don't need God, and they will never accept God, and they can do it all on their own. You, probably every one of you in here have witnessed to somebody who said, I don't need God. That, I, that I'm Okay. I'm, I'm sitting okay. I got a good job. I got a good family. I got a good home. I, I'm okay. I, I don't need God. I, don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. I've had people, several people tell me, since I've been saved, that if I cared about them, I could bring them some water in hell. I'm serious. And they were serious. That's the problem. Now, whether they got saved since then, I don't know. But that's an impossibility. You cannot go to hell and give anybody a relief. You can't go give them any water. You can't do that. None of us can do that. We can't do that. But when you got saved, you accepted the grace of God in a way that we can't even explain it. And we're gonna, not, not going to read the whole thing, but Luke chapter 18, 18 through 23, he talks about the rich man. Had to give up some stuff. This, this rich young ruler. He was self-righteous. Now, Jesus had a way of telling stories and dealing with people to get their attention. He gave parables and examples. And sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes we don't catch on, none of us. Somebody will tell us something and we don't catch on. We don't, we don't catch on. Connie got Larry a beautiful planter, a mom and a pumpkin put on his porch and he left the hospital so fast. So Aiden went with me to take it to their house the other day. And we're taking dinner too, but we get down to Marathon, Becky called and said, if you come back, I'll meet you at the top and you can get the pumpkin and the and flowers. Because we got the food and we got the stuff for Larry. We got stuff for both of them. We've got the things from the church. So all, almost halfway back up Walnut well, Pike, Aiden said, I don't understand. Granny's going to be at the top of what? I knew she said, I'll be at the top of the driveway and you just come and pick them up. But Aiden said, I'm confused. He just kept saying, I'm confused. And then when I explained it to him, he said, oh, now I get it. We've all been there. Somebody say something and you don't quite get it. Thank you, Sister Linda is a brilliant lady. She, she got straight A's in high school. She got to college. The professor had her help tutor other people in English. But when you tell a joke, even now, about 10 seconds later, 20 seconds later, Linda said, now I get it. Now as far as wisdom, she's got it. But she said, now I get it. She'll start laughing. Sometimes we don't catch things. Jim, now Jim, as fast as that, Jim pops them off. I don't know how he does it. Mrs. Decker was the same way. Those who didn't know the Deckers, Brother Decker used to pastor here in the 50s and then they, in the 80s and 90s, they retired and came back here for a while and came to church for a while. And of course, they're both in heaven now. But Miss Decker would do that too. We're standing in the foyer one time and Becky said, I just got a terrible headache. 
And without a hesitation, Mrs. Decker just said, you married him. And that's a joke between us now, but it happened ever since. That she was just the same way, just like Jim could pop off with them. Larry does that sometimes too. Just right, wise cracks right off, just things that takes a while for me to figure that out. Think about it. But these people, this ruler, he thought he had everything. You know, when God in the Bible, when Jesus in the Bible said, Here you gotta sell things and give it up. But I've made it all myself. But I've got it all myself. So then we come into this, we talk about this pride, then real quickly, the humility of it all. When you got saved, you were humble enough to say, Jesus, I can't do it on my own. I'm not my own person. I can't do it on my own. I need some help. Guys are notorious for not asking directions. I'm not going to go back there. I'm not going to do that. The one, Tim the Tool Man, when they were supposed to go into Jill's sister's wedding, and they stopped at that store, and snowing like crazy. Guy gives them directions, the phone didn't work, and so they took off. They drive and drive and drive for an hour, and they pull up, and Tim said, he said, she said, kept saying, you need to ask directions. No, I don't need to do that. He said, there's some lights. They pull into this gas station. It's the same one. We're driving for an hour. Same gas station, the same guy. Phone doesn't work. They're going to come here in the morning and fix it. Of course, they got to do the storyline and all that. But guys are notorious for not asking directions. Now we have these things. Almost everybody has smartphones. You can just say, your hey, Siri, give me directions to whatever. And this map pops up and gives you directions. Say, turn right now. They're not always perfect. Those aren't always up to date. And it's not always perfect, but it's better than nothing. You just have to get the maps out. And we talk about it. you used to go to AAA and get a trip ticket, and you had a page just to take you this 40 miles and take, turn the next page. It'll take you the next 40 miles. Turn the next page. It'll take you the next 40 miles. You got to follow the map and uh, all that. And the first time we went down to Pigeon Ford, we had those things. And Ryan, you know, we were driving, and Ryan was saying he wasn't even old enough to drive them, but he'd tell us, let's go this here, 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 and here. We'd never been down there. First time we went. Well, directions. We get so proud, we don't have to do that. But humility says, you know what? How about if I just stop? How many times do we do something, we get involved in something, and we get frustrated with it, and then, you don't have to raise your hand, because I'm going to do, do mine, but you don't have to. After you get frustrated with it, then you say, Lord, can you help me? We're, the only place you have to look, we're already looking down. Lord, can you help me? And then all of a sudden, I can't. I told you years ago I got smart. I took a magnet. I keep a magnet in my workshop. Now I've got a paved driveway, but notoriously you work on a car or something in the grass of the driveway, you drop the last bolt you need. And you can't find it. I got smart. I keep a, kept a, I keep a magnet there. I just swing it around the grass or whatever, and, it's, and most of it's steel. And click! Easy to find it. But we, we frustrate it. We look at it and say, okay, Lord. I've already done them, and I'm frustrated. Instead of saying, Lord, in the first place, can you help me? We wait till we need him really bad, and then we say, Lord, help me. Does he come through most of the time? <laughs> you may not. There's times I didn't find the bolt or nut. You know, when you take some part of a car engine, Jim, do you need all the parts anyway? Yeah. That's what I figured. <laughs> Jim's taking enough of them apart. Larry's probably done that too. We don't need all the parts. Ah, it's just spare parts. Just put it aside. We don't need that. You know what I'm talking about. Well, we have this pride, and then comes this humility. We have to say, okay, I need help. Not, not, not only from the Lord. Sometimes we have to humble ourselves enough, and we, we always say, humanly, I can do it myself. We have to have, sometimes we have to say, okay, there's other, another human being that's able to help me. I'll just have them help me. I don't really want to do it. I want to do it on myself, but I... I'll just go, i just go ahead and give him a call. Well, the Lord doesn't need a call on the phone. He just needs a call from mouth, your heart, your mind. Say, okay, Lord, can you please help me? Now, our last call to the Lord, now, metaphorically speaking, you know, touch by an angel you used to have, the angel come, and if somebody dies, and the angel comes and takes them to heaven. Andrew, we come and escort them through the light, escort them to heaven. I believe we're probably going to have that. 
I believe angels are there. They're to, there to do the job. You know what? I, I know heaven's there. I don't know how to get there. I mean, I know I'm saved, but when my soul starts leaving this planet, I don't know where. The Bible says it's in the north, but I don't know the direction. Anybody got directions to heaven? Our last call on the Lord, our last help from the Lord is going to be an angel probably guiding our souls to heaven. Holding our hand, leading the way, whatever. Now it's going to happen in the instant, in the twinkling of an eye. We don't have time to think about it and time to, you know, go go to Alpha Centauri, turn right, go to, go to the other people pulled in yesterday and they're lost. They were trying to get to Brown County State Park. She said, where's Brown County State Park? You know what I told her, Jim? I said, it's in Brown County. <laughs> she started laughing. She they were flying. She said, where's 40? He, they get, her husband who were driving said, where's 46? She said, we were, by, we were at Fazoli's. She, he said, is it by Fazoli's? I said, one building away. I said, the Burger King was 46. Apparently, they came straight down. I got a feeling came down the bypass and came straight down and ended up down here. So I told them how to get their left turn out here, right turn, right turn on 3rd Street, and you'll, you'll take you all the way to Brown County. We all get that way. So I guess it closed. Humility. God wants us to be humble enough for choosing pride over humility to say, I need you, Lord. Now, he's not trying to buy it. He's not trying to grab a hold of it, but he wants it. So when we are humble, what does that do for the Lord? We said we get blessings. Does that bless God? Does the circle get complete? A circle has to be a full circle to be a complete circle. can't have a stop in it. can't have a hole in it. A wing, a ring, a wedding ring, is, it's solid. It's a complete circle. It's never ending. You can't find the end of a wedding ring unless you cut it in half. Then you can find half. But God wants us to have that circle completed. He sends down these blessings. And they're abundant. And then we... In humility, accept Him and say thank you. And we serve Him and honor Him. And then the circle goes up and it gets completed. And He's blessed. Well, what happens when He's blessed? He sends down another blessing. And then we send up another blessing by doing it again. Now we think this real quickly. We think this time on earth is... When we're kids, we think it's a long time. And I said to yesterday, I said, you're 16 now. You, it's 24 sound old. Somebody said, I'm talking about 24, 21, 24. I work with a waitress and her daughter was 24. Just got married. She said, I got to hurry up and have kids before I get old. How many think 24 is young? Raise your hand. <laughs> 24 is really young. When you're 63, when you're 70. Jim was up here a while ago, and he said, I'm going to be 80 in March. So I know, my mom's going to be the same age. Pray for us. My mom's finally coming up, going to stay with us for about three weeks in November. In fact, he's already told Joyce she may have to come stay with them for a while. Uh, but, you know, uh, she's going to be here for a while. She wants to be here for Thanksgiving. But humility, pride. Give it to the Lord. When you pray, as we close, when you pray, I was thinking about this, I believe that's one of the greatest acts of humility we can come up with. Because we're emptying ourselves. We're saying, Lord, I need you. I need your help. Now, I want you to help me. I desire your help. Yes, we say I love you, all that. But I think that's one of the biggest acts of humility we can have is when we pray. Because we stop everything. We get busy. We're in a hurry. Um, we go shopping in Greenwood. Like Dana and her daughter did yesterday. I, I keep track every day. No, Bill was at my house. So that's <laughs> uh, he snitched. Uh, but we do things. We get so busy we forget to pray. Well, then we empty ourselves out. And we say, Lord, here I come. And if we, if we all pray at one time, He can hear us all. He can answer them all at one time. You talk about a multitasker. Humility. Let's stand. Heads bowed, eyes closed.
I don't care how old we are. I don't care how long you've been on the earth. I don't care what your age is, what you've done, where you've been, how you've done it. Let's just tell the Lord today, and you know, we got a couple more messages in this choosing, but let's tell the Lord, I'm going to come to you and want you to help me with my life. I want to, I want to just give you more than I have. I just want to hand some more over to you, Lord, because I'm holding back. Some of us do. Father, we desire to be the best servants we can be. And Lord, you know every one of us. Now, remind us not to keep using it as an excuse, but you know every one of us that sometimes we fail in that department. We fail. So Lord, help us. We're talking about this choosing to be different. We need to choose to serve you more. We need to choose to give, out, give away our pride, the eye in the middle, and the humility, and give it to you. We want you to use us, Lord. This is, our world's in a prime situation to be witness to. We all have family and friends, acquaintances, people we run into, that are so prime right now for witnessing. To accept you. To see what you can do. So bless us, Lord. Bless our day. May we honor you and bless you. And we'll thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Wait, real quick, stand there. There's a picture on there that says Sid. I found a real cute picture of Sydney. I was going to do it last week, but I wasn't sure she was back yet. Let's see if Troy Carey will remember this. Isn't she cute? You're dismissed.